everybody welcome back to Enchanted Bayou I am so happy you guys are here and joining me again or if you are new here thank you so much for clicking on this video we have got to talk about the new Peacock original series that just came out a couple of days ago it is on Casey Anthony I don't know if you guys are familiar with this case but soon you're gonna be probably more familiar than you ever probably wanted to be we're gonna go through all the details of this and just so you know, this is spoiler alert. There's going to be spoilers when it comes to the Peacock Show. So I am going to talk about some of it. Some of it's going to be included in all this. And then at the very end, it dawned on me, we have never done a spirit box to see if we could ask Ethan and E, which are my guides, if they could figure out who was responsible for Kaylee's death, little Kaylee. She was three years old and it's a toss up between really her mom and her dad. Now, her mom was actually acquitted, so we wanna make sure that everyone knows that. Her mom was acquitted of her death and her dad was never charged. Uh, so we really don't know. Now, this is not any legal thing, anything at all like that. It, it, it makes no difference, you know, as she has been found innocent. So that's, that's the important thing to know here. But I want to go through the case and I want to do a spirit box session and we use the PSP7 that you see on all ghost shows everything like that this is my favorite we use it a lot on this channel but we're going to do that at the end and see if we can ask my spirit guides ethan and e that's their names e is a female um i call her e because her name is so long and complicated and old she's from like the 1400s and i can't pronounce it so anyway ethan and e and see what they can come up with and tell us so we're going to do that, uh, but first let's go ahead and get into the Casey Anthony and Kaylee Anthony thing. Now, the reason I'm not asking the person who got murdered, which is Kaylee Anthony, is because she's only three years old. So it's really hard to talk to a three-year-old about what happened to you. I try not to talk to children unless they're, you know, unless they're like 10 plus, I guess, and then they can kind of talk about some things. But we're still not going to ask them really, you know, who murdered them or anything. At the end of the day, they're still children. So we don't want to do that. Now, let's get into this, though. Like I said, there's going to be spoilers. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the peacock thing, I'm going to basically be going through a lot of what Casey said in there. The peacock thing, it was basically Casey talking about what she feels truly happened to Kaylee. And why she lied, all that kind of stuff. So before we get into everything, we need to start at the beginning of Casey's life. Now, Casey was the mom, okay? She is the mom of Kaylee, and Kaylee was the three-year-old who was murdered. We also need to start with Casey's parents. Now, Casey had a mom named Cindy, and Cindy was a nurse, and her dad's name was George, and George was actually a former cop and she also has an older brother named Lee. He's going to come into the picture just a little bit here and there throughout the story. Now, from 8 to 12 years old, this is where maybe the lies start happening, I'm not sure, but Casey says when, from the time she was 8 to 12 years old, and this came to her while she was in prison waiting to be tried for her daughter's murder, she says that she has memories of her father sexually molesting her. And then I guess he stopped and from 12 to 15, and this is something that she says that she's always had memories of and she said the entire time, is that her brother Lee was actually molesting her as well. Not as intense as her father, but still just as damaging, still just as traumatizing. Now, we do know as a high schooler that even her best friend said that she was a liar. She just would always lie about everything, even the smallest little thing. Casey was always lying. She was one of those girls that always had a boyfriend. She loved to party. She was kind of one of the wild child type people. And she even partied herself out of high school and ended up dropping out. And then she said, now we don't know if this is true either, but she said that she went to go work for Universal Studios. So now she swung herself out of high school. She's supposedly working at Universal Studios. She's still living at home. She absolutely loves her partying life and she's just enjoying everything, being just as wild and crazy as ever, as what even her friends have said. 
Okay, so while she's living this party life and being the crazy girl or whatever, she says that sometime around there is when she gets raped. And then shortly after, she meets this man named Jesse, and she does end up becoming pregnant. Now, she tells Jesse this entire time that he is the father of this baby. And she also starts telling her friends that she doesn't want to have this baby. She wants to put the baby up for adoption because she really likes her partying lifestyle and she wants to keep going with it. So that's one thing that is said out there that she was telling her friends. It's also said that she didn't tell her parents she was pregnant until she was seven months pregnant. And when they found out of her plans of putting this child up for adoption, they were furious and they refused to let her do that. They were going to help take care of the baby and so Casey decided to actually have the baby. She named the baby Kaylee and all of her friends do say that she was an excellent mother and she really loved Kaylee and always was taking care of Kaylee and looking after Kaylee. Even though later on we know that she was taking Kaylee over to different boyfriends houses and things like that. As far as Jesse goes, well, shortly after Kaylee was born, and she was born in August of 2005, but shortly after she was born, he wanted to do a DNA test. And he found out that not only was he not the father, but also that she was still living her wild and crazy life, and it was too crazy for him, because he wanted to settle down, and she wouldn't do that. And so they broke off their relationship. They had even gotten engaged at one point but they entirely broke that off. So Casey is still going out partying and her parents are like, well, what are you doing with the baby? And she says that she has a friend named Zanny and Zanny is her nanny and is taking care of Kaylee while she's out partying. We find out later that she was actually taking Kaylee, like I said, over to boyfriend's houses because shortly after Jesse, she got a new boyfriend named Tony. So Tony comes into the picture and her parents did help out a lot. They were taking care of Kaylee too, but not enough for her wild lifestyle. Like I said, she, she still wanted to be going out all the time and being with her boyfriend. And Tony wasn't much help either because he was actually a DJ. So she would go along to all the DJ parties and everything like that with him. Now here's where everything goes bad. Kaylee is three years old and this story turns into more of a tale of two stories. There is the story of Casey's lies and there's a story of maybe the truth and then we don't know, I guess. So that's going to be for you guys to decide. I would love to hear in the comments below what you guys think. Do you think she did it? Do you think her dad did it? Who do you think actually killed little Kaylee? So anyway, so Kaylee is three years old. On 6-16 of 2008 was the last day that Kaylee was seen alive. What was said originally to the cops was that Casey was going to go out of town for a like a work trip basically and that she took little baby Kaylee well three-year-old Kaylee with her she told the cops she actually took Kaylee not with her she told her parents she was going to take her with her but she told her the cops that she actually dropped her off at this lady Zanny's house. Zanny the nanny and this is where the nanny part comes in. What we do know is that same day Casey shows up at Tony's house and she doesn't have Kaylee with her. So somewhere in there is when Kaylee went missing. This is an interesting side fact. So one of Tony's friends actually believed that Casey was giving Kaylee some Xanax and that was Zanny the nanny would help kind of drug her out, then she could do whatever she wanted. When the autopsy and toxicology reports came back, there was no Xanax found in her system. Did she ever do that? We don't know. But that is not what contributed to Kaylee's death, at least. So I want to put that in there because it is kind of an important part of the story. So like I said, on 616, she goes over, she stays with Tony, no Kaylee around, and she stays there for 31 days. Now, why does she go home? Okay, well, she is borrowing a car from her parents that her parents had basically given to her, and she's driving this car, and supposedly she went to go cash her check, and this car runs out of gas. Well, she doesn't know what to do with it, so she calls her father, George, and George says, don't worry, you know, put it off to the side of the road somewhere, and I will bring gas for it, and I will come pick it up. 
Well, George goes and picks the car up, and he brings it back to their house, and it smells just terrible. Now, Casey says it smells terrible because she had a whole bunch of trash in the back, in a black plastic bag, and like a pizza box and things like that. But the mom, Cindy, Casey's mom, says that it smells just like a dead body, and so she is really upset at Casey at this point, and she storms over to go get Casey from Tony's house and she wants to know where Kaylee is anyway because for these 31 days Casey has been telling her mom oh no Kaylee is fine Kaylee is with me or Kaylee is with the nanny she's doing great everything's fine don't worry about her and she wouldn't let her mom talk to little Kaylee well we know at this point now that it was because on 616 Kaylee had actually something had happened to Kaylee we just don't know exactly what Okay, so remember how I said this was a tale of two stories? Well, that is the first crazy convoluted story that we found out that 90% of that was a lie. Now, the second story, we don't know if it's true or not, and there's no real way right now to tell if it's true or not, but this is what Casey says actually happened, and a lot of this came out in the Peacock show, and some of this came out in the trial, but a lot of this came out in the Peacock show. So here we go, big spoiler alerts here. Casey says that that day that Kaylee was with her and they were in her bedroom, that Casey fell asleep. And she believes that Kaylee got up and went out of the room and then she woke up and she notices that Kaylee is missing and she runs around the house and she runs out everywhere looking for Kaylee and she can't find Kaylee and she can't find Kaylee and she runs in the backyard looking for Kaylee. Now, they had a pool, an above ground pool, okay, with one of the step ladders to get up to it. Now, she swears that the step ladder was not on the pool at the time. However, her dad, George, comes out with poor little Kaylee's lifeless little body and hands it to Casey. And Casey grabs onto Kaylee and just starts screaming and crying because her daughter is, you know, she thinks her daughter is dead. Now her dad takes Kaylee from Casey and Casey stays there crying and upset. But her dad tells Casey that everything's going to be okay. Kaylee's going to be fine. Don't worry about it and he takes her in the house and we don't know what happens after that. I guess he leaves with her and that is when Casey says that she was so upset she goes over to her boyfriend Tony's house and she parties and has a great time for 31 days. During those 31 days she also says that her dad keeps saying that she's fine, everything's okay, don't worry about her, you guys are going to be reunited soon, you're going to be seeing her soon, don't worry, just enjoy your time, have a good time staying at Tony's. But this is what really bugs me as a mother. If I thought my child was dead, no one's taking that baby out of my arms or anything and and I'm not going to just go off and be like, oh okay, well I thought my kid was dead, but my dad told me that it's going to be okay. So I'm going to take off for 31 days and party and everything is going to be fine. Now, I know she was only early 20s at this time, but that's about the time when I had my first baby. And I don't care who it is. No one's taken my child from me. I, I don't know. I don't know. That part just bugs me. You guys let me know in the comments below what part of this bugs you the most, but yeah. That one bugs me. How does she... I mean, there's no talk of her performing CPR or anything. In fact, there is though, Casey does believe and doesn't want to believe, but it is possible that, that she was thinking that maybe while Casey was asleep, that her father George did something to Kaylee and then and it killed her and dipped her in the pool to say that she had drowned. Now I think if he had done something to her that would have come out more in the autopsy reports which we would have heard about more in the trial. It The whole thing just seems fishy so again we need some answers that's why we're gonna ask the spirits and see what they say but 
this whole thing just is getting too crazy. Like I said, mom is really upset. Mom goes and fetches Casey over at Tony's house. Okay, now it is said that when mom shows up over at Tony's house, she finds like it's just been a crazy party over there. They've been doing drugs, everything like that. And she is furious with Casey about her not being home for 31 days, about not hearing from Kaylee for 31 days, um, about how she left the car, about that the car smells like a dead body, all of this. So mom actually gets mad and tells Casey, you're coming home with me immediately and takes Casey home and calls the police on Casey and says, you know, my, my, my granddaughter has been missing for 31 days you know, my daughter doesn't know where she is, and Casey gets mad and says, yes, she's with Zanny the nanny. And so then the mom calls the police back and says that Zanny has basically kidnapped Kaylee and the cops need to do something about it. So the cops come out and mom does tell them about the car too, about how it smells like a dead body. And the cops actually bring cadaver dogs. Now, this gets tricky. The cadaver dogs hit one time on the car for body decomposition, but they didn't hit the second time. And so the defense actually used that in court. They only hit the one time. And in the car, they found some hair and they found what they believe to be like decomposition, like skin cells and things like that. Now the hair was Kaylee's, but the hair that they found, which they thought was the decomposition hair, it actually, the way that they do that, now this is going to get technical, okay? There's little bands that are marked on the hair, and I'll see if I can find a picture and insert it here. There's little bands that are on the hair if someone has died, but there's also bands that can be on your hair for just other damage that is done to your hair. So the defense also uses that and says, you know, just because there's these weird band lines on the actual strands of hair doesn't mean that it was because Kaylee was dead. So was Kaylee ever in the trunk of that car? We don't know. She could have been in there. Maybe George, when if George really did take her off and take her away, maybe George used Casey's car to do it. We don't know. So that gets kind of confusing. And the other thing is, is supposedly the police found on the family home computer a search for a chloroform. And supposedly in the car there was chloroform found in the, the back of the car. But when the toxicology report came out, there was no chloroform in Kaylee's body. So it wasn't used. But for some reason, now this is strange too, the mom now gets involved and says, oh no, that was a mistaken search that I did. It wasn't Casey. But the police actually had a record that mom wasn't home when that search was done. So mom just got caught in a lie too. So it's like a whole big family of liars. You know, George is lying because he's just creepy. We don't know what the heck he's doing. Casey, she's just lying on stop. And then now we've got proof that mom's lying too. So let's get back to the story. Okay, so now we're in December on December 11th of 2008. A meter reader is about a mile from the Anthony house and happens to run across the small skull. So of course the meter reader calls the police and the police come out and investigate and they find a laundry basket, a like a fabric laundry basket. And inside that laundry basket, they find black plastic bag with the skull with bones and a Winnie the Pooh blanket that match Kaylee Anthony's bedroom set because her whole bedroom set was Wayne the Pooh and they found a matching Wayne the Pooh blanket. There was duct tape supposedly over the mouth and the nose of the the body but the defense says that there were no skin cells on the duct tape so it could have just been tape that was actually on the bag that slid down and slid around her face. So there wasn't proof that she had actually been taped. In fact, there was evidence, scientific evidence, on the contrary, that her face wasn't taped up. But they did identify the body after doing DNA and it was little Kaylee Anthony. 
Now through all this, of course, Casey is arrested. She's charged with first degree murder of her little daughter Kaylee and all kinds of things just start happening. I mean, first of all, like a grand jury was called, okay? And George actually testifies for the prosecution at the grand jury trial to get the death penalty for his own daughter. Now, if my daughter did something, I would fully want her to be responsible for it and all that, but I would never, ever, ever go to court specifically to try and get the death penalty for my daughter. So was he trying to cover things up if Casey was gone? Maybe Casey couldn't come out and tell the real story of what happened? Is there a different story of what happened? We don't know if he's trying to cover his tracks, but that is really suspicious that he would actually go to the grand jury and say that he wants the death penalty for his daughter. Did he dip her in the pool? Did he do something before? Like I said, Casey swears that she couldn't have drowned because Casey swears that she knows the ladder was not connected to the pool at the time. This whole thing just gets really complicated. Then, three years later, July 5th, 2011, Casey is found not guilty in the death of little Kaylee. So the jury came back and acquitted her completely of first degree murder. So she is not guilty. Uh, she was, however, found guilty on four misdemeanor charges of lying to the cops. She was sentenced to a year in prison, which she had already served three years in prison. So she had served her time and a thousand dollar fine. So she was actually released on July 17th of 2011. And she's basically done everything in her power to disappear since then. And I understand she was, this was one of the biggest murder cases ever in our time. This was one of the first huge murder cases on social media. Everyone was tweeting about it. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone knew her face. So it was all over the place. So she basically went into hiding until now. And she gave her first real interview on Peacock, which was about, I guess the whole thing was maybe so far about four hours long. I can't see how they're gonna have a season two or more episodes because pretty much everything seems described and out there and she got to tell her story and all that on Peacock. So I don't see how there's a season two, but it did say it was season one with three episodes. Um, each one is an hour, hour and a half long. So if you guys are interested in watching that, that's great. I would love to hear what you guys think about it. If you have watched it, let me know. Uh, I did watch it though, and I think that for the most part, we have pretty much covered everything that has gone on in the Peacock interview. And we've covered a lot of the lies. We've covered the tale of two stories, basically. We've covered so much in this video. So now I think it's time to get into the spirit box and let's ask some questions. Now again, this is a PSB 7 spirit box, okay? I don't cut and edit my sessions, so everything is 100% raw. What I hear you hear, the only difference is I'm going to put it up here for you guys to see what I'm hearing. Now, I also have a professional who reviews all my spirit box sessions with me and that way we can make sure that what we are hearing and that what we put up here is true and correct. Also, if anyone needs help crossing over, don't worry, Ethan and E will always help cross people over. And the last thing is that the noise from the spirit box, even though all of us ghost channels use it and all of us spirit channels use it, it sucks and it is really loud. So if you are wearing headphones, I recommend you adjust your volume right now. Otherwise, you're gonna be mad at me because it does get very loud. So I'm gonna set this up, be right back. We'll get this going.
Okay guys, so I know that was a super ultra short spare box session, but really, all I want to know was what happened to Lil' Kaylee, who's responsible for the death of Lil' Kaylee. They're not going to be able to, unfortunately, come through and tell us the entire story. Unfortunately, I don't see us ever getting the full truth out of any of them. It seems, like I said, it seems like the entire family is liars. Yeah, so anyway, I hope you guys are doing good. What do you think of these long videos and going into like a cold case or something cool like that? I think I like it. I think that we're gonna start doing a little bit more of it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Love you guys, hope everyone's doing well. Don't forget to like this video, it helps me out a ton. And it's free, it's like a free Christmas present to me, so please. Like the video and subscribe. Super helpful. I really appreciate it. And I will be talking to all of you very soon. Take care. Bye.